Hello, people of the internet. I am Mel with a plan. And if you remember in my last review, which was of the NES, I said I was going to be reviewing a game for the NES that I didn't actually mention in my NES review. And uh, here it is. This is the game. It's called Bubble Bobble. And it was a late arcade game released for the NES in 1990. Made by Taito, who you might know for Space Invaders. And let's get a quick rundown on Taito first. Taito are a company from Japan who made arcade games. That you know already. And Space Invaders was their most famous game in 1979, which kickstarted the golden age of arcades. So with that reputation, Taito pretty much went a very long way, and they're still alive today as a subsidiary of Square Enix. But Taito couldn't live off Space Invaders forever, they had to do other things. And so they did. But they did them quite well, I'm pleased to say. And one of the most bizarre things they did was start making NES games. And what was so bizarre about this was that they started making them during the early 90s, when most people had moved on to the already more advanced Super Nintendo hardware, which was 16-bit, compared to the 8-bit hardware of the NES. But no, Taito just stuck with the NES, and they made some pretty decent games, such as Power Blade 2, Little Samson, Flintstone, Surprise, Dinosaur Peak, and Panic Restaurant. And some of these are pretty rare. For instance, Little Samson can go for up to 500 euros in online auctions, and the Flintstones to present Dinosaur Peak can go an extra 4000 at $4,500 per auction. Yeah, but uh, aside from that, there's really not a lot to say about these games. They're okay, but they're certainly not worth that kind of money, unless you're a hardcore collector. But moving on, Bubble Bobble always seems to stand above these games. I wonder why. Well, let's get back to that game. So yeah, Taito were the kings of late NES era. And it was games like this that proved it. So, I'm just going to pop it in, and then I'm going to talk about the game for a bit. Mm-hmm, moving over to the far right today. Okay. Bubble Bobble. Okay, here we go. So, right away we get some very basic text options, and then it's on to the game. Now, here's the story, okay? So just in case you're confused about what's going on, that should probably clear things up. Anyway, first of all, yeah, it looks like a kid's game. I mean, look at it, it's so colorful, look at it, I mean, it, it's so happy. It, I mean, you have all these gritty games nowadays, like Call of Duty, which are all about realism and mud and dirt and blood, and then you have Bubble Bubble on the complete opposite end of a spectrum. I mean, what the hell? There's no reason for a game to be this happy. It's disturbing. So, yeah, just before I talk about the single player, I should let you know that there is a multiplayer mode that is advertised more heavily than the single player mode. Bubble Bobble does kind of focus on cooperative gameplay first, and you can only get the happy ending to the story if you play two player. Of course, I'm not playing two player because I have no friends. Anyway, moving on, the first thing you'll notice is that there's bubbles. That's where the bubble part comes from. I'm not sure where the bubble part comes from, but something tells me it's the name of the dragons. Yeah, the dragons have names. I mean, they are dragons, but I don't call them that. I don't know what the fuck they're called, but that's not a dragon. You can't tell me that's a dragon. Nope. So, yeah, they're called Bub and Bob. You complete the story with both of them, you get the happy ending, you complete it with one of them, you don't. That's pretty much it. Anyway, so there's a hundred screens you have to get through to get to the ending. And some of them are designed in clever ways. For instance, this one is designed like a Space Invader ship, or this one is designed like a little man. And they were all designed after games were, that were also made by Taito, like the Space Invader ship, and I'm not sure what the game is that, you know, the little man is from, but it's probably a Taito game. So. How do you kill the enemies? Well, you just blow bubbles at them and you pop them. Yeah. You collect the food then. But here's something really weird about Bubble Bobble and why it's so addicting. Because Bubble Bobble is very simplistic. Bubble Bobble is also very easy and very generous when it comes to continues. Some games will give you like three continues and then you have to start the game all over from the beginning. And some games will just have you start at the beginning no matter where you were. But in Bubble Bobble, the continues are actually just like, I don't know, like extra lives. You get three lives every time you try and play the game. 
and you die three times, game over. Back to the start screen. That makes sense, right? Well, then you can go to continue here. You go to continue, then you just leave off exactly where you left off the last time. So, there's no reason to ever stop playing the game. Okay. Huh. That's, that's pretty dark, actually. I mean, it's like they wanted to keep play, people playing this game for as long as they could. Which doesn't really make sense, because they never made another Bubble Bobble game. Or at least to the best of my knowledge. Huh. I wonder why. I guess there's a not a whole lot to do or say right now, but... I'm just gonna take you through some of the more interesting levels I found during my playthrough of Bubble Bobble. Like this one here. It says SOS. And I don't get that. What's so SOS about it? Okay. But that's not the weirdest one. Here's one that says OUCH. And I don't get what OUCH is about. I mean, you get hit? But you get hit in every level, so why does it only say ouch in this one? This one here says FA10. Fatten? Fatten. Maybe. I can't deduce it. This one here is in Japanese, and it probably makes the most sense out of all of them. I can't translate it, but hey, if you can't translate it, leave it in the comments below. There's some other pretty weird ones too, like this one here that says high tech. And I really don't understand what's so high-tech about it. But, oh well. I guess the high-tech part is me not being able to get out of this little corner here where the bubble is. Oh well. Anyway, finally, to wrap things up, at level 100, yeah, if you beat 99 levels, you get to level 100. Level 100 is a boss battle. Uh-huh, that's right, there's a boss battle. And one of the very unique things about this boss battle is that it's the only level in the game that has its own unique music. I, I guess if you could call it music. But anyway, about the boss battle itself, you need to gr jump up here using the platforms and grab the lightning bottle. What this does is it allows Bub to produce lightning bubbles. He jumps and pops the lightning bubbles like he would any other bubble, and the lightning bolt will fly out and hit the baddie in the direction that it flies. These lightning bolts are available er in earlier on levels, but I have to admit, I've never seen these lightning bottles before. And... I uh, know, it's an okay boss battle, I've never been able to beat it, but you get unlimited continues, so if you want to give it a go, be my guest. That's pretty much all there is to say, you know? Other than that, yeah, it's an okay game. Not much average arcade game. Worth playing, though. Yeah, okay, so it is pretty late now, I'll admit that, but, uh, what's the worst that could happen? I'll just play one more round. Best I gotta finish this review. Bubble Bobble is an excellent NES game. It has all the great qualities of an arcade game ported onto the home console, which was something the NES did really well, and it's very apparent in this game. With its cutesy style that kind of lures you in, and it pretty much sticks to that cutesy style in terms of gameplay too. The two player uh, co-op mode is prioritized much more and advertised much more than the single player mode. And you also won't get the happy ending if you play single player, which puts a great emphasis on multiplayer, and that's something Bubble Bobble does really well, better than most games on the NES. But <sighs> even though Bubble Bobble is a great game and all, I mean I gotta stop playing it. I need something that's particularly terrible. Something that will wash any good taste out of my mouth. Uh, I don't know, my next game. I wonder what's on my shelf. Oh, I wonder which one. Which one, which one shall I choose? Ah, what this one is. Oh. So, what have we got in store? 